In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to calculate break-even insurance premiums for insurance that pays out a certain amount of money when an event happens. And in this sample, we're going to say, suppose your client puts on outside rodeos, where if the weather is pleasant, she will make money, but if it rains, she will lose money. To protect herself, she wishes to purchase an insurance policy that pays her an indemnity of $30,000 if rainfall on that day is greater than a half an inch. And after looking at rainfall data, suppose we conclude that the probability of rainfall more than one half of an inch is 0.17 or 17 percent. The question we want to know is what is the minimum insurance premium you should charge to this person in order to make an expected profit? An expected profit is just an average profit. And what we're really talking about here is when you're going to sell insurance on something like this, if if it if you sell the policy and the person pays you a certain amount of money for the policy, and then if it doesn't rain, then you don't pay her anything. And so you're going to definitely make a profit. They paid you money for the policy. You didn't have to pay them any indemnity because it didn't rain. However, on days that it does rain, you are going to be receiving the premium paid for policy, but you're going to be paying out $30,000, and in those events, you're going to lose money. So in insurance, sometimes you're going to lose money, sometimes you're going to make money. We know that, but what you want to do is most of the time, more than half the time, you make money. You want to try to make expected profits of zero and expected profit. I'm sorry, expected profits that are positive because when you make an expected profit that means on average you're going to make money and so when you sell policy after policy after policy if the average policy is is profitable your business is going to be profitable and calculating the break-even insurance policy and a break-even insurance policy is the minimum price that you would want to charge and what we're going to do now is show you how to calculate that for this hypothetical insurance on rain what insurance companies do is, is they measure probability of outcomes and they often do simulations. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have one, two, three, five thousand total simulations. And in these simulations, we're going to simulate all the different things that can happen. It may rain more than half an inch, it may not rain more than half an inch. For each simulated outcome, rainfall, we're going to look at whether it rains or not, then we're going to calculate how much we have to pay to the person because it rained. And so what we're going to do is in this column simulated outcome, you don't have to understand how I did this, but I made this such that on simulation one there's a zero, that means it didn't rain more than half an inch. Simulation two Again, zero because it didn't rain more than half an inch. If we keep going down, when we get to simulation nine, we see a one. That means that it did rain more than half an inch. And so we're simulating all the different things that can happen in the world. Sometimes it rains more than half an inch, like in simulation 12. Sometimes it doesn't, like in simulation 13. And we're going to do this 5,000 times. And I know my simulation is right because watch what happens when I go to this average rate of indemnity, meaning the percent of the times that I have to pay out money. I'm going to go equals average, and then I'm going to take an average of, of all those simulated outcomes. And what it says is that on average, the average value of this variable is 0.17, which means in this simulation it rains more than half an inch 17% of the time, which is exactly what uh, what the problem that was given to us states. So it says we measure it such so that rainfall more than half an inch occurs 17% of the time, and I made sure my simulation reflects this. And now watch what I'm going to do. And you're going to see these zeros and ones, they change, because every time you say you do something in Excel and you hit Enter, it runs a different simulation. So that's why, but you can see, on average, 
16.8%, the simulation still works. The average rate of occurrence of indemnity is still going to be close to 17%. Now what I do here, uh, look at what happens, like how much of an indemnity I have to pay at each simulation. Over here, it didn't rain more than half an inch, so the indemnity I pay is zero. I don't have to pay that person anything. In simulation two, here, it did rain more than half an inch, and I have to pay the person 30000 Didn't rain, didn't rain more than half an inch, rain more than half an inch, have to pay 30000 And I do this for all 5,000 simulations. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the average of all those simulated indemnities. And what I found was that on average, I'm going to be paying out $5,142. So on average, this policy is going to cost me $5,142. Therefore, the break-even insurance policy You can notice, again, every time I press enter, something changes. That's okay. What we see is that a good number for the break-even premium is about $5,000. What this means is that if we sell this insurance policy for $5,000, then on average we're not going to make money or lose money. But if we sell it for more than $5,000, then on average we're gonna make money so this person selling this insurance will want to sell the policy for more than five thousand dollars and if they can't get more than five thousand dollars for the policy then they should not sell it at all now that I've shown you how to calculate the break-even insurance premiums used in simulations I'm going to show you that this can be done much much simpler just with one one little calculation Notice all I have to do is instead of doing the simulations, I can simply say, take my indemnity of $30,000. $30, That's going to happen 17% of the time. So, break even insurance premium should be about $5,100. That's very close to the $5,000 we did earlier. Now, why didn't I just show you this before? The reason is that later on we're going to begin using more complex insurance policies and in those cases we will have to calculate the break-even premium using simulation. A, a simple thing like this couldn't have done. But in this simple example, again, all we have to do to calculate the break-even insurance premium is to take the $30,000, the indemnity, multiply it by the percent of times that indemnity is paid, 17%, and we get a good break-even insurance premium of 5100 Both 5000 and 5100 are good numbers. There is no one perfectly correct answer for this. Anything around 5000 5100 is a good number.